Ryan Rothenberger joins us now. He's formerly served as a spokesperson for the UAW. He's now a partner for Triumph Communications. Brian, uh, based on what we know so far about these tentative deals, would you consider this a major victory for the UAW or for the automakers? I think it's a major major victory for all manufacturing workers nationwide. I mean, this is this is follows the pattern of the Ford agreement that was before. The holdup was apparently uh, this complication because they've been doing these joint ventures over these battery plants and how to uh, legally make sure that people have the right to get under the master contract if they want to in the battery plants, which they've achieved. Uh, the the uh, temp workers are going to be moved up. Uh, they're going to get over 60 percent, in some cases even more than that, uh, on their way to rise. The, the growing period for a new employee is down to three uh, years. Um, you're getting an average of about 30 percent between COLA, cost of living increases. It's a long time coming. It's the first time since the 2008 downturn that all three companies were were doing really well. And uh, this will lift all boats in other manufacturing sectors as well. You know, uh, the tactics were interesting in this case. The uh, United Auto Workers had a kind of rolling approach where certain plants went dark. And then if a deal wasn't struck, other plants went dark. It was hard to predict. It was hard to plan for the automakers. Uh, how do you feel looking back now with this result about that approach? I think we're going to have to study it for a long time, and and but I thought it was very effective in this case. Um, now I think there were a lot of things that came together here. For instance, you know, Stellantis in the 2015 agreement, they weren't doing that well uh, financially. They were still coming out of it, and in 2019 they were in the middle of a merger. So I'm not sure how much that would have worked back in those days, but. It was like a perfect storm of things here. And these companies are doing very well financially. And remember, it is only about 8% of a car is the labor cost. The labor cost will go up a little bit, but a lot of these costs are going to be absorbed. They're going to work around the edges on it. And I don't think the consumer is going to feel this too much. What you will see is a lot of auto workers and manufacturing workers who have more money who are going to be spending it rather than just putting it in Wall Street and nothing happens with the economy. Good point. Um, right now, UAW members still need to take a final vote on these agreements before they're ratified. Do you expect there to be any turmoil during this process? Well, you can never predict or speak for them. This is their employment contract. But the, the, the fact of the matter is they hit on so many different levels the things that they were trying to do, from getting the EVs under the master contracts to getting their wages increased to COLA uh, to even some pension support. I think that it will likely pass. I think most experts think that it will likely pass. But again, it's a democratic process. That's the beauty of this. And it's their employment contract. We'll see what happens. If it gets voted down, they just go back to the table and iron out whatever issues need to be ironed out. Yeah, I'd be surprised if it gets voted down. But, you know, Brian, it will be worth monitoring whether the cost is passed on to consumers. Eight percent, as you say, that's the labor component of the average vehicle. But if you got a $50,000 truck, 8% is four grand. But it, people will feel that. We will see if it gets passed on or if your theory of the all, all boats rising with the tide uh, is, in fact, the one that holds. So thank you very much for always talking us through this stuff. Uh, no one better. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you.